Being part of a family is a blessing and a curse. To be loved, nurtured, and part of a loving family is everyone's dream. Enjoying meals, holidays, birthdays, weddings, and other family events help bond people and create lasting relationships. However, sometimes being part of a family can be tough. Some families are dysfunctional, with parents who abuse their kids or each other. There are families who cheat, lie, and steal from each other. And sometimes when there's no love, only friction, some families break apart through fighting, divorce, and some extreme cases, murder. So before we dive into today's case, I post videos about true crime, paranormal, and cryptids. So if you're into that type of stuff, smash that like and subscribe button and turn on all notifications. Okay, so let's dive into it. The Muto family, a wealthy, well-educated, and close family with dentistry in their blood. The Muto family is made up of dentists from generations and with many properties and clinics run and passed down through the family. However, two members, brother Yuki and sister Azumi, would be the two black sheep of the family and would never become dentists. Azumi was born on June 13, 1986. She was the youngest of three kids. She had two older brothers and the family lived in Tokyo. They were part of a long line of dentists, both from Azumi's parents and her grandparents. Her oldest brother and other relatives were dentists. Azumi's grandfather had started the dental clinic in Tokyo in the 1950s, and her parents were hoping that all three children would also become dentists and join the family business. Along with the dental business, Azumi's parents also owned many real estate properties, and both Azumi and her brothers were directors in the family's real estate company. The family was obviously wealthy, and the futures of the three children were guaranteed. That was until Azumi and Yuki ran into problems. Azumi was actually in school and studying to become a computer programmer. Because of her good looks and bright personality, she was also working as a model and an actress on the side. But there was pressure from her family and a push to try to get her to stick to the dental business. So Azumi actually left her home for a few months at the end of 2004 when she was 18 years old. She decided to create a stage name and focus on her modeling and acting career. She was even cast a role in a small budget film called Cream Lemon, which is based on anime. But after a while, she returned home and decided to continue her schooling and modeling while living from home. She often had problems with her middle brother, Yuki. Now Yuki, who was the middle child, was just one year older than Azumi and was very interested in becoming a dentist like his older brother, parents, and grandparents. He was in dental school, but kept failing the entrance exams required to become a dentist. He always came across as being quiet, weird, and a loner. A friend of Azumi that was recently interviewed recalled, Azumi once said to me that she does not want to talk to Yuki because he's creepy. I don't know what he's thinking and he makes me feel scared. Another friend of Azumi also told police, she was very weary of Yuki. A few years ago, she said that her older brother was leering at her with lustful thoughts in his mind. She was really scared. Everybody who heard what she said was really worried about her, but nobody really knew what to do. University psychiatry professor Meiko Oda felt differently when talking about the relationship between Azumi with her brother Yuki. The suspect, the brother, seemed to have always had some sort of tunnel vision. All he saw happening in his life was growing up, becoming a dentist, and taking over the clinic. He and his sister were extremely close in age, and there's no way they could have had any kind of sort of sexual feeling going on between them. There are definitely elements needed for incest in place there. Normally, these feelings are strongly suppressed, but it's usually the female who generally perceives them more than the men. 
I think the girl must have realized something was going on. So whether it was anything sexual going on or not, it's unknown. But what is known is that Azumi felt uncomfortable about her brother, and days before she died, she told her friend she was worried about his mental state. On December the 30th of 2006, both Yuki and Azumi were home alone. Her parents and brother were visiting family during the Christmas and New Year's holidays. The details that happened that day were described to the police by Yuki, who confessed to killing his sister. Around 3 p.m. that day, Azumi was talking to Yuki about his constant failures on the dental entrance exam. Yuki said that he was tired and angry from constantly being reminded of his shortcomings, so he took a wooden sword, which is commonly used in Japan for the sport kindle, and bashed her over the head repeatedly. Her face was swollen and hurt very badly, but she was still alive and fought back. Lashing at him, she continued to berate him, saying that he had no real dream or purpose in life since he was only following what his parents wanted. Yuki's anger boiled over and he grabbed a towel and began strangling Azumi, explaining he had to kill her in order to shut her up. According to Yuki's confession, he learned from a TV show that humans die after 180 seconds of being strangled. So in remembering that, Yuki continued to strangle Azumi, counting to 180. After 180 seconds, Azumi was still breathing, so he took her to the bathroom and put her in the bathtub. He proceeded to push her head underwater until she drowned. He then wiped down the bloodstains that occurred from their fight. Now if that wasn't dark enough, this is just the beginning. He then decided to dismember the body in the bathroom with a knife and saw. He separated the body parts and put them in four garbage bags, hiding them around his room. He also sliced off Azumi's breast and her genitals and put them through a garbage disposal. Oddly, he told the police he did that so no one would be able to identify the body if it was male or female. He then stole one of Azumi's panties and left the house to go to his study camp. Being that family was away, Azumi's body remained in the house until January 3rd when Yuki's brother and parents returned and found the bags. The family suspected that Yuki was involved and called the police. The next day, police arrested Yuki when he was returning home from camp. Once news of the murder was released, many tabloids started reporting that Yuki was a necrophile and a cannibal who raped and ate the parts of his sister. But the Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office denied those claims, saying that they were all false. Since Yuki confessed right away and explained the details of the crime, there was no doubt that he was guilty. However, the defense team for Yuki tried to prove that Yuki was not mentally capable of taking responsibility of the crime. The psychiatrist who examined Yuki said his mental state at the time his sister died was unstable, and also adding at the time of the murder, he had a diminished capacity of such an extent it would have been extremely difficult to judge from right from wrong. While the mutilation of the body occurred when he was criminally insane and not capable of being held legally responsible for his actions. Prosecutors, however, felt the bad blood between Azumi and Yuki was slowly building until Yuki finally decided to kill his sister. Yuki expressed that he hated his sister, not because she was only mean to him, but also she had a bad attitude toward her parents as well. Despite the siblings not getting along, their father told the court that he didn't think that the relationship was so bad admitting, I should have known before it happened. Yuki was charged for murdering his sister and the desecration of her corpse. Originally, in May of 2008, the Tokyo District Court had found him guilty of murdering and giving him seven years in prison. He was acquitted for the mutilation and dismembering of her body on the grounds that he had diminished mental responsibility. However, the Tokyo High Court rejected the reason with the judge saying, a written statement by Yuki submitted to the police gave a chronological, organized, and detailed account of the events leading to the incident and the crime, suggesting that he had a clear memory of all the events. The Tokyo High Court instead increased his 7 years to 12 years in prison. Now regardless if it was 7 years or 12 years, unfortunately, Azumi lost her life and her family was ruined because of Yuki's actions. Whether the family's pressure was too much for Yuki to handle, or as he said, the belittling of his sister Azumi was the cause, we'll never know. Unfortunately, two of the three children of the Muto family would never follow the family's business, 
and the one that is a rising star will never have the chance to do anything. The pressure of succeeding and the hate of his sister boiled within him, resulting in taking her life and ruining his own. So what do you think? Leave your thoughts and comments below. I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And until next time.